election of Governor Peter Mba of the People's Democratic Party in the March 18 governorship election. The three-member panel of the tribunal, led by Justice Kudirat Murayo, dismissed the petitions of the Labour Party and its candidate, Chijoke Idoga, insisting that they could not prove their petitions. In dismissing the petitioner's petition, the tribunal declared that the National Youth Service Corps discharge certificate is not a qualification to contest a governorship election. Idoga is challenging the return of Mba as duly elected governor of Enugu State on grounds of submitting a forged NYSC discharge certificate over voting among others. Politics is over. It is, as you know, we, we had begun governance since May 29. Yes. And our arms are open and wide. We beckon on those our brothers we ran this race with to join hands with us to deal with the task ahead, the task of building the Enugu of our dreams. Yes. So we are going to be urging you, our supporters, to indeed be magnanimous in victory. Let us all join hands together to build the Enugu of our dream. When they said that the first respondent, Mr. Peter Mba, who attached a forged NYC certificate, is not a requirement to contest for governorship election in the states. And we ask these questions. When the law says a forged certificate, it did not mention WAEG or any other thing, but four certificates. And NYC a four certificates. They don't even go to the extent of telling us whether it is forged or not. The only rule that the supreme witness of NYC, who was director of certification, did not upload his written statement on oath. And we have to ask, an unwilling witness that you are going to bring to court, will you, will you be willing to provide a statement on oath before the date of the tribunal? The answer is no. Meantime, the governorship candidate of the Labour Party in Enugu State, Chijoke Idoga, has vowed to challenge the judgment of the Enugu State Governorship Election Petitions Tribunal, which affirmed Peter Mba of the People's Democratic Party as the duly elected governor. The tribunal, chaired by Justice Kudrat Murayo Akano, Akano, had struck out Idoga Labour Party's allegations of overvoting, bypass of beavers in the election, and forgery of the NYSC certificate. But reacting to the judgment through the spokesman, Idoga Ngokabia campaign organization, George Ugo, Idoga urged his supporters across the state and in other parts of the country to remain calm, law abiding, and go and to go about their business without fear or hindrance. Straight now to Abia State, where the Governor Alex Oti has presented five SUVs to five judges of the State High Court as official vehicles. Speaking at the brief ceremony held at the High Court Complex, Umwahia, Governor Oti promised to give all required to make the judiciary take its pride of place. Oti, represented by the Chief of Staff, Pastor Caleb Ajaba, noted that he is committed to ensuring the dispensation of justice and the rule of law in the state. He added that those who undertake the task should have the best conducive atmosphere to perform their duties. According to him, he has not hidden his respect for the judiciary and rule of law and commended the cordial relationship that exists between the executive and judicial arms of government. And now to Kano State, uh, where the city continues to remain calm as residents of the ancient city complied with the 24-hour curfew imposed on the state by the government. Well, this is coming after the Kano State Governorship Election Petitions Tribunal declared the immediate past Deputy Governor of the state, Nasser Yusuf Gawona of the All Progressives Congress as the winner of the March 2023 governorship election in the state and nullifying election of the current state governor, Abba Kabir Yusuf of the New Nigeria People's Party. On Wednesday, the state's police command announced a strict enforcement of a 24-hour curfew beginning from 6 p.m. on Wednesday, the 20th of September, to 6 p.m. on Thursday, the 21st, as part of measures to maintain law and order in the state. A reporter who monitored the situation today reports that following the curfew, human and vehicular movement have been restricted within the city. Hello. 
Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.